Having looked at the low pass and band pass filters in previous videos, this time I want to take some time to look at the high pass filter. You might remember that the low pass filter we got when we took the output as the voltage across the capacitor, and the band pass filter we got when we took the output as the voltage across the resistor. If we take the output as the voltage across the inductor, however, in a circuit like this, then we get the frequency response shown. And this time you can see we've got two zeros at zero hertz, as we've got a term in j omega squared in the numerator, and the denominator is exactly the same as it was before. So we would expect our frequency response to start off at very low frequencies, coming up at 40 dBs per decade until it gets to the break frequency of the first pole. So if we're going up at 40 dBs and we arrive at a pole, we would then continue going up at 20 dBs per decade until we get to the second break frequency. And then we would just be going straight because we've now got two poles pushing us down by 20 dBs per decade each, and two zeros at zero hertz pushing us up by 20 dBs per decade each. They would cancel out and we would just get a flat frequency response from then on. And that would be the, the Bode approximation of the frequency response. Now, it's quite easy to derive all of the corresponding results for the high pass filter case from the low pass filter case, if you just realize one thing. And that is that if you go to the resonant frequency, say here, and just flip the frequency response over, you would turn a low pass filter into a high pass filter. That's the only difference. You can prove that result by expressing the frequency response of the high pass filter in its general form, noting that the numerator is actually the same term as we've got in the denominator. It's the term in j omega squared. So we could write that in the general form as j omega squared over omega naught squared over 1 plus j omega q omega naught plus j omega squared over omega naught squared. Now, consider a frequency, let's say, at this point here, at alpha times omega naught. The gain at that frequency there would be given by j alpha squared omega naught squared j squared rather, over omega naught squared, all over 1 plus j alpha omega naught over q omega naught, plus j squared alpha squared omega naught squared over omega naught squared. And all of the omega naught squareds cancel out. That just leaves us with minus alpha squared on the top, and 1 plus alpha j over q minus alpha squared on the bottom. Now, consider a low pass case, which was the exact mirror image of this high pass case. So it starts at 0 dB. At this first pole here, it starts going down. It has the same value at the resonant frequency itself. And at the second pole frequency, starts heading down at 40 dBs per decade. The general form of that low pass case would be h of omega is 1 over 1 plus j omega over q omega naught plus j omega all squared over omega naught all squared. And now consider what this value would be at this point here, at omega naught over alpha. Remembering that this is a logarithmic scale, so that multiplying by alpha will move this point a certain distance in this direction. Dividing by alpha would move the point 
the same distance in the other direction. So let's consider what this low pass filter, what its value would be at this point here. Well, that would just be 1 over 1 plus j omega naught over alpha times q omega naught plus j squared omega naught squared over alpha squared omega naught squared. Again, all of the omega noughts cancel out and we're left with 1 over 1 plus j over alpha q minus, because the j squared give us a minus 1, minus 1 over alpha squared. If I multiply top and bottom of this by minus alpha squared, I would get minus alpha squared over 1 minus alpha j over q minus alpha squared. Now this and this are complex conjugates. They have exactly the same magnitude and therefore the amplitude gain would be exactly the same. So once we've established that, we can derive a frequency response, or at least the amplitude response, of our high pass case just by ignoring the effect of these zeros, analysing it as if it was a low pass filter, and then just flipping it over. All the same results would apply. The gain at the resonant frequency is the Q factor. And if you extrapolate the high frequency, and the low frequency asymptotes, they would meet at the resonant frequency. It's true of the low pass filter, it's true of the high pass filter as well. And that's really all I need to say about the high pass filter case. In the final video, we'll have a look at a whole load of other circuits. Just a very quick look, because there are a lot of different second order circuits and some of them have more interesting properties than the few examples that we've looked at.